Approximately four years ago, there was a major discovery of an exciting crater in Greenland. Discovered by one of the programs ran by NASA, that was essentially responsible for scanning different glaciers through radar mapping in order to discover what's underneath. And here the major discovery was a really large crater, a crater formed by a major impact that was smaller than the one that killed the dinosaurs, but still large enough to potentially influence the planet in some extreme way. And because of this, this actually gave a lot of excitement to this somewhat controversial hypothesis. Or basically it brought it back into view, giving it potential evidence. The idea known as the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. An idea that's actually supported by only a very small minority of scientists, but that in the last few years tried to use a lot of different types of evidence, including different types of deposits, in order to explain the unusual cooling period known as the Younger Dryas. A period that started approximately 12.9 thousand years ago and lasted for approximately 1000 years. Which then led to the sudden end of glaciation and the beginning of the modern Holocene age. But exactly what happened here was always kind of questioned. And although the most accepted and probably the easiest explanation involves a melting of a glacier that basically changed the distribution of water and the currents on the planet, the explanation that always sort of captured attention was the one involving potential impact. An impact that might have occurred approximately 12.9 thousand years ago and could have maybe changed the conditions on the planet just enough to cause the cooling and to possibly even cause an extinction event because we know that the Younger Dryas also sort of correlates with the major disappearance of megafauna. A lot of different types of animals that used to exist here that eventually perished for some unknown reasons. And though normally in science the most boring explanation is usually the correct one, in the media that's not really the case. It's really the most spectacular explanation involving the asteroid impact that sort of captured the attention. And so it was actually the discovery of that crater that suddenly gave scientists behind this hypothesis a lot of hope. What if this is exactly what they were looking for for many years now? The proof of that collision 12.9 thousand years ago, explaining everything all at once. Although here they had a lot of other evidence as well, for example tiny microsphere rules or basically tiny pieces of glass that they believed were produced during such an impact, deposits of platinum that they believed came from outer space, and just overall the layers that they referred to as the black mat that according to the small team of scientists was always dated to have been approximately 12.9 thousand years old. And so by itself this hypothesis appeared to have a lot of evidence and a lot of people actually sort of, for the lack of better words, bought it. Now, me being me and me being kind of, I guess, boring, I always kind of question it from the beginning. And I always wondered, okay, but is it possible that maybe this is actually not the explanation here? And I obviously made a few videos about this, trying to refute the idea. But it wasn't really until recently that I finally found a paper that basically does everything for me. It literally refutes every single point ever made in this hypothesis. And they do a pretty good job at finally putting this to rest. It's extremely unlikely to be an impact, with the Younger Dryas just being something entirely different. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss a couple of papers that were recently released, with one definitively disproving the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, and the other possibly presenting an additional explanation to what might have happened to a lot of megafauna around this time. As always, you can find both in the description below. So here, well, I think the title pretty much explains everything. Comprehensive Refutation of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis by Vance Holliday and quite a few other scientists. Now this is not the first refutation of this idea, but I think this particular paper probably presents the most comprehensive analysis to date. And well, in a nutshell, they kind of explain that everything that's usually used as a kind of a proof of this hypothesis is always either somewhat misinterpreted or basically completely wrong. For example, let's take this crater. It's known as the Hiawatha Glacier Crater, and in theory it could explain the hypothesis if it did date to this particular age. But turns out that most of the recent analysis suggests that this is actually something like 50 million years old, not 12,000, 50 million. So there's absolutely no way that these are related. Suggesting that there is still no crater for the hypothesis, even though a very large crater would be expected. So basically trying to invoke some kind of a cosmic event to explain all of this, at the moment just doesn't really make a lot of sense. No crater, no proof. 
Okay, let's just keep going. Proponents of this hypothesis would often use a lot of different types of magnetic grains, spherules, nano diamonds, or even plutonium as a proof of a potential impact. But when many of these studies were re-examined, there was usually a tremendous amount of issues with anything from identification of what exactly we're actually looking at, to quality of measurements, to interpretation of results. So basically just by looking at something, they would assume it's maybe, I don't know, sphere rule, produced by impact, but in reality it could be something entirely different. There was just no proof of any of this in any of the studies. As a matter of fact, many of these particular phenomena were later associated with many terrestrial processes that don't require anything from outer space. No impacts, no asteroids. On top of this, a lot of sites that were originally used as an indicator for this impact did not have a very high precision dating technique used to determine the timeline. In many cases, the quality of the data was just not very good, and some of the samples, or some of the layers, appeared to have way too much uncertainty in terms of the age, up to a thousand years. So basically dating these samples was not really done very well, or was done in a way where it wasn't clear what the age was. Likewise, one of the main propositions in the hypothesis is the demise of one of the human cultures known as the Clovis culture that used to exist in North America. This was assumed to be the result of the impact. That's of course on top of the demise of the megafauna. But the problem here is, once again, just really no evidence. Too many incorrect assumptions, unusual conclusions, misleading information, and quite a lot of logical fallacies that just, that just don't make any scientific sense. For example, when it comes to the Clovis culture, the hypothesis assumes that they disappeared completely after the impact. But in reality, all of the evidence points at the opposite. It points at some kind of a cultural change in the humans that used to live here, involving technological change, and just a general change in the way that people live their lives. A cultural change is a very likely explanation here because that's just a human thing. So basically it was a transition for the Clovis into something different. When it comes to the megafauna extinction, the assumption before was that it happened right after the impact. But in reality the evidence suggests the opposite. A lot of the megafauna disappeared way before the impact, thousands of years before. Some others survived for many many years after, for example mammoths. So it just doesn't really make sense once again. On top of this, a lot of the locations used to try to prove the hypothesis only usually provide a kind of a age estimate, never really a precise age that would help us with statistical errors and would help us determine the exact point of impact or the exact time of impact. So far none of this was done in any of the studies. Then there was the question of the black mats, the organic rich soils that were believed to be a result of the impact. But many studies after that basically refuted this saying that there is really no connection whatsoever. None of them seem to be linked to the Younger Dryas period, and only a few examples in maybe some locations seem to have happened in maybe the same millennium. But none of this was probably the result of a collision. Then one of the biggest assumptions scientists behind the hypothesis always state is that somehow Younger Dryas represented an extremely unique period that didn't actually happen during the Quaternary for approximately 3 million years. That turns out to be false as well. Apparently quite a few of these similar events happened hundreds of times during the entire Quaternary. So this is not even something that's unique in any way. Scientists behind this paper provide evidence for similar events that happened many times before. The other assumption that's often repeated is that somehow this was an event that happened everywhere on the planet all at once. Basically the temperature changed instantly everywhere. In reality though this also goes against a lot of the record we have so far from various archaeological digs. It was not instant, it was not synchronous, and it happened at different times in different regions. If this was an impact that's impossible to explain. Once again more evidence in that paper I mentioned. Scientists behind this recent study also discovered a lot of badly misinterpreted ice score records that many proponents of the hypothesis used before to try to prove their point. For example, they try to prove that in the ice cores there are signs of huge amounts of fire around the planet. In reality, the data is basically pointing at the opposite, low incidence of fire. Or at least in the data that they were trying to present. We'll actually discuss the fires in a few seconds. So once again they just show that the data interpretation in this case 
was not very good. On top of this microsphere rules that sometimes are believed to be a product of an impact, in reality have quite a lot of different origins. And in this paper they even show that some microsphere rules used for Younger Dryas impact hypothesis in reality are produced by fungi or tiny mushrooms right here on planet Earth. Here's one of the examples from one of the older papers and it's basically a fungal sclerotium. In other words, what they thought was an impact sphere rule is just a tiny, tiny mushroom. And so there's basically a pattern of similar misinterpretations and misanalysis of so many different things. And so the scientists behind this hypothesis have always been doing this. They basically see something, think it's related to the impact, try to prove it, it turns out to be like a duck or something. And unfortunately, the counter evidence always gets buried by the amount of excitement these types of discoveries make. And so yeah, most of these are not the result of an impact. They're just a result of life on Earth doing Earth life things. They also use platinum anomalies as a proof that all of this is extraterrestrial. But in reality, there are quite a lot of terrestrial sources that produce exactly the same observations. But most importantly, there's never really a crater. It has never been found. And without the crater, the only possible evidence they had was the record of fires. Specifically the layers of charcoal that was believed to be the result of some kind of major fire started by the impact that happened 12.9 thousand years ago. And in this case, the evidence is strong. There might have been fires around certain time during this period. Not necessarily 12.9 thousand years ago, but definitely sometimes during the Younger Dryas. Multiple peaks of charcoal abundance are quite clear in a lot of different samples and actually did occur during periods even before the Younger Dryas in separate locations. Here's the thing though, there seems to be no correlation with impacts in this case, but there is a correlation with something else. The arrival of these little guys to certain locations. Which actually takes us to this recent paper that was released just a couple of days ago that potentially explains what may have happened to the large mammals living in North America, at least in one region. Here's that paper. Pre-Younger Dryas Megafaunal Extirpation at Rancho Brea Linked to Fire-Driven State Shift. Okay, let me dissect this for you. Basically, they're talking about a certain area in California where there seems to be a direct connection between human activity, fire, and the disappearance of large mammals, or megafauna, around the same period of time, with the overall correlation being very strong and essentially showing us that approximately 15,000 years ago it might have looked like this, 14,000 years ago things were maybe changing a little bit, but 13,000 years ago things really took a turn for the worst, and it might have been because of fires which were most likely caused by our ancestors who basically learned how to produce fire and who might have either accidentally or on purpose started to burn ground, with this graph showing us a very strong correlation. The arrival of the Clovis culture, the tremendous increase in fires in this particular location and the slow but very dramatic shift of a lot of different megafauna in the area along with a decrease in the forest cover and just the overall changes in the environment in this area. And unlike a lot of previous papers, the actual dating here is extremely precise. Here the radiocarbon dating used approximately 170 bones from 7 different types of animals to try to establish a precise timeline for when they started to disappear. And by then comparing this to the data from charcoal records, they produced a very detailed chronobiology showing a direct relationship between climate, vegetation, fire, humans, and megafauna that used to be very common in the region. In essence showing that the population of these large animals was relatively steady for over a thousand years between 15,000 and 13.2 thousand years ago. However, there was a sudden decline in population between 13,000 and 12,900 years ago, which based on the charcoal studies, scientists determined was probably due to fires. Although in this case the fires were probably a lot more common because of the previous change in climate where things became warmer and much drier. And so between 13,500 and about 13,200 years ago, the risk of fires dramatically increased. And because our ancestors were using fire and potentially didn't extinguish it at all times, 
it could have led to dramatic fires in the region at least once in a while. And so their data indicates that there was a dramatic increase in forest fires about 13.5 thousand years ago, way before Younger Drive started. And though the humans arrived here probably much earlier, maybe even 3,000 years earlier, the animals were doing fine even though the humans were actually hunting them. So it's unlikely that it's the hunting that caused the extinction, but as we've learned from the fires in the last couple of years, it's quite likely were the fires. These can be very quick and very devastating for the entire fauna living in the area. And so the conclusion from this study is that fire is a way that humans can technically have a large impact over an extremely large area. With the overall climatic changes observed in certain regions in California sort of presenting an explanation that no longer requires any impact or any kind of an explanation that's too extraordinary. And more importantly presenting us with something that technically is happening right now. Because of the overall drying of the forest around the planet and because of the overall increase in temperatures, unfortunately the chances for the forest fires have dramatically increased in a lot of different locations on the planet once again. For example, at home back in Canada, one of the cities where I used to live for several years, Yellowknife, is basically now struggling with survival when it comes to forest fires. A lot of forests have been burned, a lot of land disappeared, a lot of animals have been killed so far, and there's really no sign of stopping just yet. And as you might have learned in the last few months from a lot of different news sources, forest fires have been pretty much happening everywhere. I'm secretly hoping that this is just a one-off, but yeah, it's not looking very good, huh? Anyway, on that note, the Younger Dryas is probably not a result of an impact. At least that's what a lot of studies are saying. And also forest fires are maybe a sign of something bad to come. Let's maybe be careful and let's, uh, yeah, avoid another extinction event. Anyway, on a much heavier note, we know that humans survived and thrived afterwards. So... Good news, I guess. Which also means that we might adapt to a lot of this and might actually make a world that's a little bit better than it currently is. Or at least I hope so. Anyway, on that more positive note, thank you for watching. Check out both papers in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.